Ghost, Aliens, and Beyond. Hello all and welcome back to Ghost Aliens and Beyond. I'm your host Phil and with me again my co-host Simon. Welcome back. Hello everyone. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah again guys. I've done it again. I've changed the background. Sorry about that. I'm just obsessed about changing things. <laughs> well you can actually blame me for this one because I thought he said he was making a new background but he wasn't and he just threw this up in the last five minutes. Yes. So I think everyone, it looks before we go any freaking further, freaking awesome. Anyone, if we're going any further and it's on YouTube, please subscribe for free. Give this video a thumbs up and a like. Helps the algorithm and gets the video out to more people. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about the elevator game. Hmm. Yes, interesting. So, Simon, anything interesting happened your way? Scary? Normal? Uh, nothing really scary. Um, nothing supernatural. Just a hell of a lot of idiots around at the moment. Oh uh, yes, that's because a bit. So sun. I don't know whether that could be classed as supernatural, but there is. Today has been one of those days where everything has seemed to uh, annoy me. So uh, I had a box. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you see the box. There was a box this size inside a box this size today, and it was sliding around and nearly fell out when Sounds I was at work. Like uh, I went shopping. And an idiot decided to stand behind my car when I tried to reverse and wouldn't move until I got out of the car and told him to move. Strange person. Yeah, he was on the phone It's weird some you reason. say about parcels. I've got to ring Amazon this week. We keep on getting exactly the same parcel for the exactly same woman who doesn't live at my house. She must have put the wrong address on. Well, she's now sent it three times. I mean, right. how stupid is she? <laughs> But I'm going to ring Amazon and say to them, look, you need to get hold of this woman or whoever she is or just block her from sending things to my house because I don't want it to come to my house. Unless it's something expensive. If it's an expensive video camera sort of camera I can take to theme parks oh, and record with. If you just leave it outside the door. Amazon posted it. You don't know. Well, if they posted it, so well, yeah. I haven't received it. What can I do? Well, I haven't opened one of them up yet, but I'm going to soon because the sheer fact I want to know what the hell's getting delivered to my house. Might be a few vibrations, you never know. Hmm, not mm. for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, before I go any further, hi, Julie. Mm. <laughs> um, something weird keeps going at my outside. Not super weird. Maybe it's just a trick of the lights and everything and how the room, my room set up. My bedroom, I'm looking out of the hallway and right down the end is a fourth bedroom. Now, it keeps on looking like the door's open until you walk all the way down to it and then the door's clearly shut. Now, I've lived all my life, never noticed it, but the last couple of months, I'm thinking maybe change of the daylight and that now I'm seeing different shadows. You see my face, I'm going to say, go and get an eye test, mate. Oh, no, 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 seriously, <laughs> it is it's mucked up, mate. I'm not the only one who's noticed it, so something's definitely going on there. But oh, you never know. I, I just think, I honestly think it's just um, the time of the year, the light, shadow a bit more. And we're yeah, not, it could be, because um, when light comes through any window at the moment, it's being reflected. Over. And I keep yeah. one. I keep. I need to look at you, but I keep looking at myself. <laughs> I'm not being that guy type How of person. Vain of you. I know that's the <laughs> word I was looking for. But every time I'm, 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 I'm trying to look at you, but I keep looking at myself. I don't know why. <laughs> this is this her. It's distracting. Yes. So <laughs> Simon, but, I set up yeah. a new one for today, didn't I? Something. What well, I don't think super known. I've seen some really stupid videos, and I've seen some interesting videos about it. And if people, if you weren't, it's the Korean elevator game. Now, Simon, I believe you've never heard of this until I told you about it. Nope, never heard of it. One tiny little, little iota. I heard about it about six weeks ago, but I couldn't be bothered to research. So I had a sort of idea what it was about, but you know, it was one of them. I think I heard of it because of the um. Cecil Hotel documentary on um, um on Netflix, so that's right. what brought okay. that to me. Yeah. So people, if you're wondering what this is about, pretty much it's a idea of it is that you do these certain set of rules for different floors, 
and I will go through them in a minute. And it's meant to take you to another dimension, what's meant to be the dead dimension, apparently. Um, the most famous person to do it is Elisa Lam, as I said at the um, Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. I think it's Cecil, I can never get the name right. But Simon, you know what I'm like with reading names and that. I'm quite useless at it. I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, let's get through these rules quickly so everyone can understand. And if you want to try it, by all means, get back to us and tell us if it worked or not. Rule one, yeah. enter the elevator on the first ground floor by yourself. No one else can be in there. You have to be in there on your own. If someone's in there, wait until mm -hmm. it's free. Simple. There are so many rules to this. I couldn't believe this. Rule two, go to, right, so press the button. Um, so you, you're, you're on the ground floor, what we call the ground floor. They call the first floor in America. So it depends how you're doing. So we're going to do it the American mm -hmm. way. Pretend the ground floor is the first floor. So rule two, go to the first floor. Uh, so you're on the first floor. Press the button to the full floor. Do not get out the elevator ever. Rule three, stay in the elevator. Press the button for the second floor. Rule four, stay and press the button for the sixth floor. Can you see how this is going, everyone? Um, rule five, stay in the elevator again. Press the button to the second floor. Rule six, don't get out of the elevator, as I keep on telling you. Press the button to the tenth floor. Uh, well, but I'll just hang, hang, I'll just hang, hang me fire on there. Rules are right, but what we need to let people know is if anybody gets into the elevator, with you, you have to start again from the very Fair beginning. Enough. Yeah, okay. So we've done oh. rule six. Um, we did rule five, get to the second floor. I think rule six, don't get out the elevator, press the button to the 10th yeah. floor. Some people at this point hear a voice calling them to the second floor in the middle part of the ritual. Don't reply, do not answer, just totally ignore. Mm -hmm. Rule seven, don't get out of the 10th floor, press the button to the fifth floor. This is where it gets fun, I think, if it happens. At this point, it's been reported some some people see a woman. She may enter the elevator on the fifth floor. She may look like someone who you know to get your attention. She can even scream, shout, and do loads of stuff to make you look at her. Whatever you do, do not acknowledge her. Do not even give her a glance. If you have to, just close your eyes and just when you open them, look straight forward, tunnel vision at the buttons. Quite simple, isn't it? Rule eight. Press the button to the first floor. Rule nine, if you feel the elevator is not going to the first floor, but going up to the tenth, you performed the ritual correctly. Now, if it goes straight to the first floor, get off there. If the woman's still there with you, still don't acknowledge her. Get out of the building without saying anything, and everything should be fine. Otherwise, something bad's meant to happen to you, apparently. It was never fully explained that. Um, but if it does go to the tenth floor, you've done it correct. Um, and you travel to this other ultimate dimension world. Um, and how will you know this? Well, if you've got a test and you're going to do it with your friend, before you even do it, get them to the 10th floor. And if you don't see them, if they said being an arsehole and hiding, but if they're really just standing there and you can't see anyone, you've done it. Um, the thing is, yeah, I don't know how... reports you are, it's similar to... It's the same, it is the same to, as our dimension, but you'll be a bit of a red haze and... In the distance, there'll be a red cross, which is another thing you don't, you don't go to either. Yes. So um, I don't know if you should get out the elevator. Personally, me, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, it says you've got two choices, doesn't it? It says you either get out of the elevator and the elevator will close and that's it. But then you've got to find the same elevator and do the same ritual to get back. Or you stay in the elevator and nothing ever happens. So, yes. So very interesting. I did actually think to myself how this could work. Um, freaky if it does work. Personally, I'm, I'm going to debunk it straight away. I think it's the biggest well, lie. You, you, to be honest, mate, I don't know if you, you can see my face. It's as soon as I watched the video you sent me, I watched a couple more, and my first words out of my word: "What a load of bollocks." <laughs> yeah, this Plain is obviously this is gonna be something relatively new for when elevators were made as well. So yeah, because it's the same that it was dated back to the 1913s or something or something like that. And it was I'm like, well, back in the 19 that age there was elevators, but they were 
manual elevators were, so one had to be in there holding a lever. So, yeah. but yeah, I just thought this is an old wives' tale or a bit of folklore, and it's just Urban escalated legends. in the last few years because of the internet and Reddit, and people are just using it for YouTube views. Because believe me, look on YouTube. Just put any elevator gaming on YouTube. And just look at the views. They are absolutely ridiculous. I think one of them had 10.2 million views. So the question is, so, has it worked for anybody? If it is real, for well, God's sake, someone give me proof. But I tend to not believe it's real. And if it is real and say they get the elevator and they can't get back, there's no way of proving it. So, people, hmm. my question for you, would you try this? I'll try it because I, I think nothing could happen. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably... I'll, I'm one of those, it's one of those though. You, you either try it to prove it's wrong and then nothing happens, but there's also that thing, well, is there enough truth in it that it's actually going to work? And I think that's the whole point of it. It's no one's willing to try it because supposedly if you do f- try and film it, electrical stuff stops working. Um, but I don't know. But as soon as I, as soon as I saw it, I just thought urban legend Escalated because of the internet, and it's a lot of bollocks. I'll tell you one thing, though. I think it'd make a great film. Well, yeah, I know, because it, it's not? kind of but, someone in a lift what, all day. What I would do is I would change the story a bit if I was a filmmaker, and if anybody likes to steal us, that woman, if she comes on at the fifth, you can't escape her until you do the ritual all the way back, and she's chasing you down, and she's getting closer and closer to you. And if you don't do it quick enough, eh, you're dead. That would make it a bit more fun, then. Maybe you could you could potentially do it, but if you're going to do anything with an elevator and the dimension, you might as well just do the Tower of Terror. Ooh, you're saying that like everyone knows what the Tower of Terror is, mate. Well, if you don't know what the Tower of Terror is, find out on the Epic Florida Project. He got the name right. What? We've been saying it for a week. <laughs> <Are we>? <laughs> 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 oh dear well um i think that's pretty much about that um mm. as i say we are fans of scary stuff as well and just a quick one simon are you looking forward to something that's not real what well, is real but it's based on stuff halloween horror nights oh yeah and if people wonder what that is yet again that's <laughs> You can tell. If you can't, if this is the podcast, that's yeah. not going to work for you. But yeah. go and check on YouTube. He was showing a top that said pumpkin guts, I believe. Yeah, from um, one of the rooms in Slaughter Cinema back in 2018. And yet again, we're talking like everyone as we're talking about. We're talking about Universal Studios um, Halloween event, Halloween Horror Nights, what is absolutely awesome. Um, everything. And I've got my Ghostbusters Blinky Cup. Um, yes, that's fantastic. Everything's based, you know, on scary movies and stuff they do themselves. If anybody can ever make it out to it who's never been, I promise you, you will love it, unless you're really scared of spooky things. But if you are, why are you watching or listening to a show like this in the first place? Maybe because the I don't know, maybe <laughs> because uh, I don't know, <laughs> he doesn't know. People, yeah. he really that's what I, that, that that's a that stumped me that one. I can't, I won't uh, unless it's just randomly come on while you've been watching um something else. Thank you, YouTube. Do it to everyone else. <laughs> oh, just a quick one, everybody. If you want to know, because it won't be on this show, if you want the latest news and our opinions and our reaction to news, what comes out of Halloween or Horror Nights yet again, get over to. What is obviously our epic shows? Please subscribe to us. Press that little bell, as we always say, to get notifications. Mm-hmm. And on the Epic Florida project, that's where our reactions are going to happen for that. Not on this. Yeah. I may talk about it after the event at some point, but I'll try it and keep that miles away from here. The main news for Florida will always be on the Epic Florida project. Yeah, because we're going to try and do instant reactions. So if uh, a house gets announced, we're going to try and put a show out. Probably only about bit about five ten minutes, if that, of our instant reactions, what we think, what we're hoping to see, and that's going to get us into the spooky season. And just of Hall- one, one Halloween. More thing, one more thing, guys. You're watching this show, so you're on. You, you're on epic shows already. 
as I said, press subscribe. Me and Simon are going to do something very scary if we get to a thousand subscribers. Simon, explain that. Yeah, we are going to be going on the world's tallest slingshot. Um, I don't like slingshots. I've never done one in my life. They look terrifying. But we want to do it uh, as a thank you for all the subscribers. But the thing is, we want to do it live. And we can't do it live unless we have at least a thousand subscribers. So, because I don't think they'll let me take a a, a desktop on the yeah. slingshot. <laughs> well, but I got even oh. more scared of it. Did you see the one? I think it's in Old Town. It it um snapped one side. Did it? Yes. <laughs> but that that is quite Ooh. an old one as well. So, but I don't think anyone got injured by. It. I think it was probably in the practice period was useful. But yeah, that makes it more scary. So mm. people on epic shows on YouTube, my. You know, say again, people, just in case people are listening as a podcast, check us out on YouTube. Get on and subscribe to us, even if you don't want to watch all the time. Subscribe. If we get to a thousand, you're going to see us scream like little girls. Well, all about our faint. I don't know yet. I'll scream, not faint. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never you never know what your adrenaline's pumping. Right, Simon. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, did you start Simon Says Darts, the YouTube channel before the last one? I'm not too sure. Well, do you um, want to quickly plug it quickly for everyone and obviously your Twitter? Yeah, it's just, um, as you can see on the screen, it's uh, at Simon Says Darts. Same on YouTube. It's Simon Says Darts. It's just a darting channel, um, which is the three little arrows you throw at a dartboard if you don't know what darts are. Some people don't. It's not the ones that you blow out of mouth into. I used to ass. <laughs> That's a different... <laughs> it's Ventura. When nature calls, no. You've been no, talking no. to Craig too much. You have. <laughs> I, don't, I just have one of those things. I just have one of those mindsets today. But yeah, I'm recording my games. Uh, I'm playing currently in a couple of leagues, so I'm recording my matches, putting them on YouTube for people to watch and wait, see what people are thinking. And if people want to interact, sometimes I'll do a live stream. And that's it, really. It's just me trying to get better and trying to become a PDC dance player. So, and it's right. my small little journey. Um, people, obviously, if you want to check something else that I'm doing, I'm doing hotels in Orlando reviews on my own YouTube page, not to fill this one up with stuff all the time. It's called Epic Phil. Go and check that out. Check my Twitter on there as well for that. Um, at Epic Phil One, two L's by the way, because my parents were awkward. Um, and also, guys, as I said, this one. Follow us on Twitter at G A A B Podcast. Um. There's not much more I can really say, guys. Um, check out all our shows. No. And say, subscribe to us on YouTube. Yep. That's really all we can do. So, from me, it's a goodbye. And from Simon, it is... Stay spooky. Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, um, I'm on my own. Um, Jamie was meant to be on with me, but unfortunately, of the day of recording, um, his child had an accident and had to go to hospital. Hope your child's good, mate. That's for you there, mate. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to do a bit of old school. Ghost aims to be on when I'm on my own. And why? before I do it, I'm going to ask you all again, if anybody who listens or knows people who love this sort of stuff would like to come on, get hold of me on Twitter at G A A B podcast or even in a, email us on ghost aliens and beyond at gmail.com but i'm more likely to notice on twitter unfortunately if it's on youtube you can comment down below as well and we can try and sort something out i'm always looking for guests it used to be very easy it's getting harder but you know these things happen unfortunately um so this episode is going to be on my own and hopefully jamie will be on next month and We'll get it going back to normal, as we say. Sorry, I'm just trying to get a few things up on my phone. So what I thought I'd do, I love Orlando, Florida. I thought I would choose something from actually from the Rosen Inn International's own website. Um, it's called Haunted or Hoax, Seven Spooky Places in Orlando. So it's, it's obviously it was done for Halloween, this was, so I'm going to ignore the starting part. I'm just going to get into the quick stories. Then after that, I'm going to read a story for you, a scary one. It's a bit more like what I do for Supernatural 
Story Scares. It's a shorter episode if you're watching this on YouTube. It's only a podcast. Uh, m- myself or a guest will read a scary supernatural story. It doesn't always have to be super scary, though. Know? And they're about 10, maybe maximum 15 minutes long, just for people to have a little scare at night or enjoy themselves. But anyway, let's get into these haunted places. So the first one is Hamburg Inn. Right? It's Ham- what? Hamburg Mary's. You may think you're just stopping for a delicious burger and entertaining drag show, but this Hamburg Mary has a few tricks up its sleeve. Located on Church Street, it is one of downtown Orlando's oldest districts. Locals say this burger joint is home to the ghost of a young girl from the 1800s. She is known to tap on windows, wave at guests and skip down the street late at night. So that's the first one, everyone. But I thought was pretty interesting. I mean... If you're ever out in Orlando, or you live in Orlando, I should say, why don't you go and check these out and um, see if you can get a sight or a video yourself. It would be absolutely awesome, I think. So we're moving on to the second one now, Orange County um, Regional History. So Orange County Regional History, this is called. Um, for history that never dies, visit Orange County. County Regional History Center, formerly known as the Orlando Courthouse. So that's interesting. I'm just trying to find a way I can read this without not looking at you guys. Um, legends say the building is haunted by a specter or a serial killer, killer Ted Bundy. Wow. Inside, you can explore the courtroom in which he was convicted and perhaps even catch a glimpse of him along along the corridors. So. Yeah, that's quite a cool one, actually. Now, if I could actually do that, I definitely would. So we move on to the next one. Lake Lucrene. L-U-C-E-R-N-E. Simon, just for you, you know how bad I am at trying to figure out words I've never said before. Right, so at this lake, continue your downtown Orlando ghost tour by visiting Lake Lucerne, Lucerne, or Lucerne, or whatever it is, on South Orange Avenue. This this quite unamusing lake may seem peaceful, but locals have reported spooky signs by the shop. A mysterious lady in white, oh, lady in white, can't have them, can't live without them, is said to appear after dark under an old oak tree and vanish into the night. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Let's be serious, that's cool as hell. If you saw her, spooky, but cold as hell. Cool. So we now got Lake Eola. E-O-L-A. Right, no need to panic. The phantom dog has more in common with your own friendly pup with the gruesome hand of um, Baskerville. Witnesses say the small brown terrier frolics along the eastern sides of the shore and disappears in thin air. Now, I'm a dog lover. I would absolutely love to see this. Um, it would always be my hope if my dog passed away, I would see him doing things like that when he's passed, just to know he's still around and keeping an eye on me. So, guys, Eisen Theatre in Zan. Oh, it's like you're trying America to make me look an absolute idiot and not be able to say words. But it's spelled E-N-Z-I-A-N, or in American, E-N-Z-I-A-N. Right. The, um, the Eyes On is a perfect place to enjoy independent foreign or classic films, as well as a brush with the supernatural. Said only to appear at moonless nights around 1 a.m. The ghost manifests itself as a disembodied head screams and vanishes into the kitchen next door presumably for a late night snack this somebody and man that would freak me out let's be serious i love this stuff but if you said you weren't get scared by even seeing it i'm gonna look at you and call you a liar and another place i can't say because Orlando hates me it seems even though i try to come every year and spend my money there the ovidio lights o-v-i-e-d-o if glowing orbs or more more your stuff, check out on the um these lights. A spooky phenomenon popular with the local teenagers in the 1940s, on through into the 1970s. No source for the lights has ever been discovered, although theories range from gristly tales or swamp gas. Mm, that's probably more like it. You'll find the lights suspended in midair at the bridge crossing over the whoa, the Econ Lock 
hatch, the, the Econlock Hatch River. But watch out, the Eerieites have been said to chase cars on occasion. Hmm, that could be bugs as well. Spooky Hill, the last one. The last one, and easy to say, Spooky Hill, thank you very much. Also popular with the youth of yesteryear, this um, gravity defying destination seems to roll your car uphill. Yep, pushes your car uphill, in other words. A weatherhead sign offers a tower or battle between a chief and an alligator as a explanation, though a variety of local legends and conflicting stories exist. The only thing we can really be sure of is the Spook Hill Elementary across the street had one of the most spiritist mascots ever, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Right, now I'm going to give them a cheap plug for this. Wherever you're in a ghost hunting across Orlando or seeking thrills in theme park celebration, you'll be near the action of the Rosalind International. Even the most dedicated ghost hunters need a break, so relax in the sunshine, by the pool, and enjoy a delicious meal on our one of our restaurants, or take a nap in the air-conditioned guest rooms. The book your Orlando go away, you can call them on 407-996-1600. UK people, you can do it online, the um, Rosen Inn Hotels. I've actually stayed at the Rosen Inn International myself, funny enough. And you can, it's in a nice position, it's right near a McDonald's, it's not far from anything. It's a very good located hotel and a very good cheap price. Now, if you're wondering about that hotel, cheap plug time, people. I have my own YouTube channel called Epic Phil. Now, I'm doing on that hotel reviews. Funny enough, the first hotel review for me was the Rosalind International. Go and check it out. It's very simple. We watch a YouTube video. Then we get onto TripAdvisor. Six, we reach six um, people's reviews. So two awesome, two average, two really bad. We move to Google Maps, look over the top of it, see what's around. And then at the end of it, I give my personal review um, out of my five stars. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. Yet again on YouTube, Epic Phil. Hopefully be in the show notes if I remember to put it in. Right, so I thought that was pretty cool. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to go show you what my other show is like. And I'm going to basically read you a scary story. Right, so let's get into the story part. As I would say, normally this would be super natural story scares as a podcast. But you're getting it as a YouTube and on the normal podcast. And as I say, if you listen on the podcast, you'll be able to find all of them on there. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much, by the way, um, go to any podcast app of your choice and we should be on there and you'll be able to hear the really good, scary ones. So this one is called What is People? Was What is it? Let's do that right, people. Was it people or was it aliens? Storyteller Doug Avriel, retired owner and manager of the Flatchard Lake Lodge. Doug grew up as one of the eight boys on his parents' sprawling dude roads, the Flathead Lake Lodge in rural Montana. As a teen, the Avril boys ran wild. We rode around as a little gang of cowboys, he remembers. They'd saddle up and head off to the Czech cattle on the three giant tracks of the lane. A family, the family managed, which formed a triangle around some of the state's most remote um, areas. One summer in the 1960s, the brothers came across a ghastly sight. There on the ground were three dead cows, neatly arranged in a circle. No obvious wounds were viable, but the reproductive organs had been removed. But there was never any blood. It was almost surgical removal, as he remembers. During the, this decade, America was obsessed with aliens and write-ups in local newspapers posted that perhaps this was the work of an extraterrestrial. People mused that aliens had taken the reproductive organs for testing. But one day, Avril, Avril and his friends came across a lance in their path. Attached to it was a cryptic note with a threatening message. That's when we thought, it's got to be people doing this, he says. Then things got really strange. Over the next few days, a series of odd events unfolded. First, the brothers stopped in a local bar to grab a hammer, leaving their horses, uh, horses in the back of the stock truck. The horses were packed in tightly, and Avril was only going gone for a few minutes. When they came back to the horse packed into the middle of the truck was mysteriously out with no sign of struggle that's strange right in the middle people think about that and it somehow got out 
We had no idea how this they possibly could have gotten that horse unloaded without unloading all the other horses, he says. The next day, a new wrangler on the ranch fell off his horse and he was badly injured. They'd all been riding together, but not a single other member of the crew saw the accident. It was the weirdest thing, Avril says. The man's injuries were so severe that he was left permanently disabled. Finally, the last terrible thing happened and an old camp cook drove out to meet the brothers and ride for the day. But when he arrived, the tailgate of the stock truck had somehow gone missing, even though it had been there when he loaded up. His horse, Betsy, had fallen out the truck and been dragged behind the vehicle for who knows how long. Oh dear. They had to put her down on the spot. To be honest, it just killed him to see what had happened to Betsy. He probably should have put her down. T- we probably should have put her down too. Remember, Zabra. These three events were just boom, boom, boom. Three things in a row. They were so weird, all tied together because there were right after we saw that spear, he remembers. Three things like this, three dead cows um, left in a circle. Avril used to tell the stories from that summer around the campfire quite a lot. But over the years, he'd gotten new stories, and so they'd been shifted out of rotation. Besides, they were awfully grim. But recently, he got a call about a downed bull in a buffalo. It was out in one of the most remote parts of the ranch. A neighbour had seen a pack of 16 wolves. And normally, the wolves would, don't, would not just not bother a buffalo. But 16 of them? I thought, well, maybe. He went to investigate. Then lying in a snow-covered field was a bull. But there was no bullet holes or teeth marks or gashes on its corpse. Either stranger, um, animals and birds hadn't touched it. Not even the buzzards. But it's really unusual, he says. One other thing was amiss. It was a reproductive organs were gone again and there wasn't a single footprint in the snow around it, or anywhere along the mile long walk into the ranch from the nearest road. Ask Avril whatever he thinks he's dealing with aliens or humans, and he'll tell you he's pretty sure it's humans, but I'd rather it was aliens, he adds. After the summer, back in the 60s, seeing the humans were capable of this, I'd pick aliens every day. Now, that's just one of the stories. As I say, people, we do tend to have more scary stories on Ghost Aliens and Beyond podcast. So go and check them out. They'll always be the ones what are called Supernatural Stories Scared. I think we've done something about Epcot. We've done one about the Black Eyed Children, all that sort of stuff. And we've got another one coming out very soon, just after this. This usually comes out on the 6th. It's usually the 10th that, that of the 13th that usually comes out. So, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this. As I said, Jamie, I really, really hope your kid gets better soon. Hopefully have you on soon and we'll get your stuff done. What I sort of heard for you sounds so interesting. Everyone, if you're on YouTube, give us a like. Get this out to more people. Subscribe to Epic Shows to check out all our other stuff. Also, if you're on a podcast app listening, if you're on Apple specifically, go and give us a few stars. Um, give us a nice little comment if you can. And tell your friends and family about it. And yet again, if you'd like to come on to Ghost Aliens and Beyond, if you'd like to read a story on Supernatural Story Scares, or if you'd like to come on and tell your own stories, true life stories, or things you might be interested in on the main show on Ghost Aliens Beyond, yet again, Twitter us at GAAB Podcast or email us at ghostaliensandbeyond.com. From me to you, everyone. Grab the pot, grab the pot, grab the pot, turn the lights on, and prepare prepare to be scared. See you all soon, guys. Thank you for watching or listening to another great episode of Ghost, Aliens, and Beyond. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GAAB Podcast. If you have any supernatural stories you'd like to share yourself, email us on Ghost. Aliens and beyond at gmail.com. And remember, grab the popcorn, turn the lights off, and prepare to be scared.
This podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network.